So we are here at Rafa's Garage, working on the Corolla today, doing a little maintenance. So today we're actually gonna swap these rotors out or maybe even cut them if they're still salvageable. Um, and check out the rear brake pads, see how they are. Might replace those too. So I'm just gonna walk you through it. So let's take off the tires, lift up the car. <laughs> did the easy part we put a tire shock right there jack lifted it up now to work on the brake system to remove it we need two bolts uh they are 14 there's this one and there's that one right there remove those two this comes out and then we have to remove these pins and then take out this rotor off and see how the e-brake is on this one um remember to actually remove your e-brake especially you guys that dry stick shift um because if not it's not gonna come off so yeah i'm gonna do those real quick these two bolts and then i am gonna need brakes they are worn out as you can see so something else i gotta buy you can see them from right there too so needs replacement let me see if i could still resurface these if not i'm gonna get new rotors so like i said those two bolts are out the caliper just comes off and like you see i do need brakes so yeah i'm gonna get new ones and all i gotta do now is remove this spring right here that locks this um these pins in and then then you're just able to hammer it out with the screwdriver that's what i'm gonna use a screwdriver and a hammer just to pop them out um this one might be a little difficult because it is a little rusty so not a problem but you could use a screwdriver i'm just gonna use a screwdriver just to pin it to hit it i don't use these cheap screwdrivers anyways um but you could use a punch it makes it easier <laughs> able to take them off you do it does have two of them um you take this one off first and then you take off the other one these two go in a little hole that goes in here and then this one is the one that holds it in place and it actually goes in the little hole on the brake pad right here and secures the other one so this one does come off first the small one and then the big one so yeah i would recommend you actually taking only one side off and leaving the other side alone just in case you need reference of anything you can always look at the one that you haven't taken apart so that's my advice and then after that um these pins are actually easy to come out even though they're a little rusty but uh, this was me a pain in the butt so i'm gonna take that one off and then take off this remember to remove the brake pad uh the e-brake um because if not it's gonna be locked see this one's loose right now so uh just gonna give it a little whams with the hammer and it should come off <laughs> So if hammering doesn't work, like it didn't work right now because all that rust around here and probably around the bolts, then you see these two little screws right here. You find something that's long enough or screwing long enough that fits that same thread. And what you're gonna do is gonna tighten them and do one side and then the other side. And this slowly is gonna get pushed out. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Find some bolts and start taking it out that way so i didn't catch it on camera but i took it off i tried using the method that i told you guys about but it was too rusty so i ended up just hitting it a couple of more times harder and it actually came off 
because I didn't want to go through the hassle of rethreading these. Hopefully I catch it on camera on the other side and I'm going to start taking off the other side, just these two bolts and the rotor. I'm going to leave the brake pads that way I have a reference of how these pins go, even though I do know how they go, just in case I forget, but I also have footage, but better safe than sorry. So let me take that one off so I could get these checked out and see if they could be resurfaced. If not, I gotta buy new ones. And I am taking the brake pads with me just so I could have a reference and make sure they give me the right ones. So it's also always good to take the part you're looking for. So yeah. And just like that, the other side is out. Now I have to take these to O'Reilly's. O'Reilly's is the one that actually resurfaced. I don't know about AutoZone, but I know O'Reilly's does. So let's load them up in the truck and head over there. So just dropped off the parts at O'Reilly's and I got the brake pads that were $41 and to resurface the calipers are $15 each. I did three because one of them, the two in the back and then one of them had to do, was fucked up in the front and had to order the brake pads. So they're gonna be, hopefully by the time they resurface the brake pads. So let's go home, chill for a little bit and it's just a waiting game. So there they are, the new brake pads. Let me check if they're the right ones. Yeah, look the right ones. And this is what it looks like with full life. So yeah, I'm gonna slap those on. I got these resurfaced. They need new ones. So I'm gonna slap them back on and call it a day. So I'm gonna adjust the e-brake. I'm gonna expand this little thing, just move it a little bit. Um, when putting on the rotor, you do want this line up with this one because just in case you do want to adjust it you could just untake this off and you could use a screwdriver and just do that if you don't align it then you gotta take this off and do it this way but since i'm already here i'm gonna adjust it slap it on and make sure it moves freely or it actually goes on it won't even go on we start messing it right here um but if you do have it on and you're adjusting it through this hole you do want it to move freely that's when the e-brake's not engaged when it engage it's gonna spread in this out and lock up the rear <music> cylinder in i use this tool to actually compress it um, you can use a clamp you can use other tools but this works for me right now that's what i have so all done everything's put together even the little metal clips and this is what you want you want it to spin freely when your e-brake is disengaged um, so time to put everything back together on this side the wheel and start working on the other side one last thing i forgot to tell you guys make sure that you pay attention on your bolts you see this one is longer than the other one the long one goes up here in the top. It's for this one. This one is thicker, that one is shorter. Makes sense. So pay attention to details. Um, also make sure that these are able to slide in and out. Uh, that one's being a little difficult, but they're supposed to be um, sliding in and out. Make sure they're greased up. This one, looks like it's stuck maybe it needs a little grease maybe it needs a little cleaning like the ones in the front so 
I'm gonna get this one unstuck and maybe add some grease to it. Um, this will, um, if you don't do this, it might wear out one brake pad more than the other one. So yeah, double check on this. These are small little details you gotta look into. If not, um, probably you're not even gonna be able to put it in because you're supposed to slide this all the way back. So yeah, I'm gonna get this one stuck and see how it goes. So there it is. It's able to slide in and out. Make sure the seals are good because dirt will go in there or brake dust will be in there and that's how they end up getting stuck. So back to business, put everything together. Um, same thing, pull the piston out there, remove the brake pads. I still haven't done it. Um, same process. All done on this side. Now just to put the wheel back on and put it on the floor. Make sure, I repeat, make sure you pump your brakes before you head out. brakes once it gets hard then you already know it's good but that will be it guys thanks for watching please like subscribe and we're out